So in video 2317, we took this, which is a perpetual wedge of a gear ratio of 100 to 1, because it was a demonstration, and we turned it into this, which is exactly the same thing. Only all of the gears are inside, and the gear ratio of this is 60 to 1. And why 60 to 1? Well, there are 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, and it's ideal for a clock. And that's what we're going to do with it, turn it into a clock. To do that, all we actually need is this, a little motor. This little motor I got from Amazon, and it's rated at 60 RPM for 6 volts. So, of course, 60 RPM is ideal for us, because 60 RPM means 60 turns in one minute, and so one turn equals a second. Brilliant! So our 60 RPM motor will sweep one full circle for every second. And of course we want it to tick a second on the clock face, so what we want is for it to have move one sixtieth to indicate the second. So of course if we now take one of our perpetual wedges, and you can see here I've reprinted this with little feet on it, and we put the motor into that wedge, then as that motor turns one full turn, the, this section of the wedge will be driven one sixtieth to tick out a second. Of course, as that's gone all the way around, that's 60 seconds or one minute, we want a minute hand to tick one minute away. So what we do is take another perpetual wedge and stick it on top, and now we've got a second and a minute. But of course, when that's done one full minute, it's an hour. And when we have an hour, we don't have one sixtieth, we have one twelfth to move. These perpetual wedges are actually brilliant for very high gear ratios. When you're looking at other gear ratios, so say for instance a planetary gear, planetary gears operate best in the range of 4 to 8, 4 to 1 to 8 to 1. You can make them at 12 to 1, but you're getting at very much the extreme end, the planets start bashing into each other, and so there's a limit to the rear gear ratios you can get out of different things. So some arrangements like planetary gears will give you about 8 or 10 to 1 comfortably, some like the perpetual wedge will give you 100 to 1, and there's a space in the middle that's serviced by things like cycloid drives. And cycloid drives is something else we've covered a lot. We've looked at how to generate them in Tinkercad, we've looked at building models of them, and we've looked at how to use them in things like generators and wind turbines. So cycloid drives are brilliant for that mid-range gear ratio of sort of 10 to 20 to 1. We need 12 to 1 in order to make that clock happen. So to do that, what I've done is constructed a cycloid gear. So I drew this in the program that I showed you in the previous video and you'll notice there are 12 lobes on it because with this kind of gear the gear ratio is actually the number of lobes. So if you're using the program then the k value is 12 and the r2 is 0.5 if like the radius is 0.5. If the gear ratio is number of lobes, then the number of pins that you need is lobes plus one. So I created a disc here with 13 pins on it, and these pins are the same as the R2 value, so they have a radius of five millimetres or a diameter of one centimetre, and of course that sits nicely in there, and if we rotate it, we'll get a gear ratio of 12 to 1. Now because of the limitations on Tinkercad, you can only do 200 iterations. This is a little rough, so a bit of sanding makes that work beautifully. That then sits on top of there, taking that rotation that we've got and turning it into a 1 12th rotation. So this will now measure the hours. But we need to stop and think for a second. If we wire the DC motor so that it turns anti-clockwise, which is simple enough. You just swap the two wires over, the red and the black, and it will rotate clockwise or anti-clockwise, depending which one has the positive. But it will rotate the second hand clockwise. But then because it's gone through this gear, these gears each reverse the direction of rotation. So it feeds the minute hand. That means the minute hand will now turn anti-clockwise, and then it feeds the hour hand, which reverses it again, turning it clockwise. So we'll have a second hand going clockwise, an hour hand going clockwise, and a minute hand going anti-clockwise, which can be a bit of a pain. 
we can quite easily reverse the rotation of that by putting in an idler gear. Now, of course, we want it to be along the same shaft, so we can't use a side-by-side -side gear, but what we can use are bevel gears. So this little cage takes these bevel gears. This big bevel gear goes in here. This section goes in there, pushes through the bevel gear. There's a clip that goes in there, and we glue those, making sure that they're free to rotate. Then these two smaller bevel gears go at the, at the side here and have these pins to hold them in place. So you push a pin through and add the bevel gear to it on both sides. Then what we do is we take this final bevel gear and it rests on those two bevel gears with that on top of it. And nothing will drop out because all the gears are kept in place. So if I turn this top gear, then that top gear goes in that direction, but the bottom gear is going in the reverse direction. The whole thing gets glued to the clock face between the 12 and the 6, and of course the clock face then sits on top of the main clock like that, and we can fit the hands. The minute hand now goes on here, like that, and all we need to do is put some shafts in there for the second and the hour. The first one is this tiny one, which feeds into that cam, making sure that that little hole in it is pointing outwards. The cam then feeds through the first perpetual wedge. Now, these perpetual wedges are identical, so it doesn't matter which one you do. Once you've done that, flip it over and you'll find a three millimeter washer, which goes over the first axle and is glued in place to make sure that that still turns freely. That's done, the first gear drops in place and then the top goes on to that gear there completing that first stage. Now in that hole there goes the second shaft which is this longer shaft, longer thinner shaft, gets glued in place in that hole there. Then the second perpetual wedge goes on and gets glued on top there. Then the second cam goes on, second gear goes on and then the second side of the perpetual wedge goes on. Be sure to glue the cams in place, but not these gears. They need to be free to rotate. The central axle might be a bit tight in places depending on the tolerances of your printer, so just give it a sand to make sure that it moves smoothly through these gears and yet sticks in the holes where we need it to stick. Then we take our epicycloid and this shaft here, which will become the minute shaft, and that glues in that central hole right there. Then we slide it onto that central shaft, line it up, and these feet get glued together with a spot here to hold it in place. When that's glued in place, we take the flatter cam with the larger hole, and that glues onto that section there. And then we take our disc and pop it in there. There we go, and then we take this piece. This piece has that glued onto it, which then slides over and fits in there. And now we've got the drivers we need. This is the hour hand, this is the minute hand, and this is the second hand. All right, to finish this, we have this little base plate that glues on there like that, and then the hands are printed in black. And because of this reversing, we have to put the hour hand right down there, so it's this big cheesy wedge. Then we take the entire face and slide it in place, like that, and put a spot of glue on the bevel gear in order to hold it. And then we can put on the minute hand. and then the second hand. And all we have to do when we fix that lot together is attach the motor, and the motor goes on the back here. So we take that motor with its flat and jam it into there, and it has a motor holder that it fits into, and the motor holder goes into this slot at the bottom there, so we press that whole thing together. And that's it wired up and in place. Now it's a 6 volt motor, so I've got a 4 bu uh, battery box there with an on-off switch. If you can't get the same motor, then remember this motor mount is detachable, so just change the size of it to suit your motor, and the hole where it goes into the axle, change that as well, and you're going to be away. So let's turn it round and turn it on.
Okay, so there are a couple of things to say about it. One, it was very noisy, that's because it's all rubbing surfaces and no bearings. So if you want it quieter, you're going to have to go through it and put bearings in it. The other thing is, although it was ticking away seconds, then it's going to be in this form a pretty rubbish timekeeper. And that's because we've only got two elements of the clock. We've got the mechanism for accounting for the movement of the hands, and we've got the motor to be able to drive it. And we're relying on the fact that that's a 60 RPM motor, and it's not. It's going to be round about there, and it's missing one major component, and that major component is the control mechanism. If you take apart a quartz mechanism, that's exactly what you're going to see. A tiny motor, loads of gears, and then some way of controlling the speed of that motor. Actually, it's not even a good motor. It's a pretty rubbish and cheaply built DC motor that's run by some very simple electronics. And that's the subject of another video. Because we've finished the actual mechanics here, what we need to look at now is accurate motor control. Because accurate motor control doesn't only apply to clocks, of course. It applies to things like robotic arms. And if you want to build your own 3D printer, you need to be able to control that motor. It often surprises me how the same principles come up time and time again. And we'll deal with that in another video, but I posted that because it's the mechanics finished. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Oh, I will put this on um, Thingiverse and anybody's interested in these SDR files. But again, thank you very much for watching. And please do remember to like and subscribe.